When you think about it, she's kind of everywhere, right? Certainly on our coins, on our bills, on stamps, statues, highways, holidays. The Queen's influence is everywhere. But whenever a fight breaks out over whether we should keep the Queen or just move on, one thing that both sides often miss is that no matter how the debate goes, it is nearly impossible to cut ties with the monarchy. Now, when we started looking into this, one thing that very quickly became super obvious was just how big of a task we're talking about here. See, Canada's federal political system is made up of three parts. You have the judiciary, which is the courts, you know, right up to the Supreme Court of Canada. You have the legislative, which is Parliament, House of Commons, and the Senate. And then you have the executive, which is the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office and cabinet. All three work under the monarch, currently the queen. Abolishing the monarchy would mean chopping off the head. We go now to Parliament Hill for the ceremony of installation. Do swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty. Queen Elizabeth II. Queen of Canada. Her heirs and successors. I do. I do. I do. I do. So a constitutional monarchy is a system where you have a head of state who is uh, a monarch, so a royal person, and their power is very limited. Oh, by the way, this is Philippe Lagasse. Phil, you can wave hello. Uh, he's a professor at Carleton University, also an expert on that, I guess, intersection, that juicy intersection point between the crown and government and where power really lies. So if the queen's role in Canada is sort of baked into the constitutional framework of this country. How hard would it be to change that part of it? In the Canadian context, it's actually quite difficult. We have baked it in in the hardest amending formula in our constitutional framework, which means you would need to get all the provinces and the federal parliament to agree. In all likelihood, if you want Canada to become a republic, you should try and go to the United Kingdom and convince them to become a republic. Okay, so this is the point where I got a little bit confused because we have seen countries with ties to the monarchy cut those ties before, right? Less than a year ago, Barbados shed the queen as its head of state, completely transforming from a constitutional monarchy like Canada into a republic like the United States. The British monarchy has fallen like a leaf in autumn in Barbados. Take a look at this. The Constitution of Barbados, which I pulled up on my phone as a PDF, they've completely stripped out all references to Her Majesty, to the Crown, even the word sovereign. They've replaced the Governor General with an elected president, and they've shifted all power and property from the Crown to the state. So how'd they do that? Ultimately, what it came down to was that the bar in Barbados is so much lower than it is in Canada to affect this kind of a constitutional change. All they needed was a two-thirds majority in Parliament, and then, presto, it's done. So, in Canada, it would be very difficult to unplug from the monarchy in a wholesale way, but that doesn't mean that there hasn't been a gradual, very deliberate chipping away at the crown. I affirm, I affirm that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and, bear and bear true allegiance, true allegiance to, Her Majesty, to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II. For example, and many of you watching will know this firsthand, to become a Canadian citizen, you need to swear an oath of allegiance to her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors, which, if you came here from a completely different part of the world, you might see as really strange, even offensive. In 2014, three longtime permanent residents did not want to pledge allegiance to the monarchy, and they took their case all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. Dror Bar Natan was one of those three people and that was the part we fought against. I find the idea that one person is born with 
privileges relative to another and that these privileges are state sanctioned and hereditary and supposedly last forever. I mean, I found this idea repulsive. <laughs> but the verdict, none whatsoever. The Supreme Court wouldn't even hear the case. The lower court ruling was upheld, which was essentially that the oath is foundational to this country's system of government. And until that changes, it's just part of being Canadian. Unless you just grit your teeth, you take the oath, and then you take it back. That's called disavowing. It's completely symbolic. The whole thing is, of course, symbolic. But I wanted to have my symbols right. Now, none of this really approaches the question of abolishing the monarchy altogether. And, and keep in mind, for a lot of people, that's more than OK. Because this was the point at which I started wondering, is it even a good idea to cut ties with the Queen? Yes, there are all kinds of passionate arguments about cost, about independence, about colonial history. But it may surprise you to know that for many indigenous communities in this country, there is a real weight between that relationship, between them and the crown. Now, Delia Opikiku, hello. Hello. You are a Cree lawyer. You're also from the Canoe Lake First Nation in Saskatchewan. Yes, I am. And, and you've spent a huge portion of your life devoted to treaty rights. That's correct. In this country. So, so can I ask you, why would it matter if Canada were to abolish the monarchy? It matters, especially to elders, because the uh, crown and right of Great Britain was the original signatory to many of the treaties. And so for many elders, it means that the crown and right of Great Britain acted as a protector. Now, is that still important today in a legal sense? It's more symbolic now because Canada took over the protection of treaty and Aboriginal rights under the uh, 1982 Constitution. And the provinces also, according to the courts, have responsibility to implement and enforce the treaties. Right. And so I guess I'm wondering how much that symbolism really matters. I think the symbolism was very important under uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth. I don't know if that's going to follow through with Prince Charles. So where does that all leave us? Well, given how entrenched the monarchy is and how much political will would be required from everyone to change this country's system of government, chances are it's here to stay. But the Queen once said, I have to be seen to be believed, meaning the surest way to abolish the monarchy may simply be through indifference.